Another day, another mile. You've been gone a good long while. Another hill, another climb. Can't afford to lose no time. So much road still left to go. Where it ends, nobody knows. And the wind blows in your face. You love the thrill, you love the chase. Going into Tokyo, it is bad that we didn't qualify all the boats. That just puts more pressure on us as individuals trying to get into the team. It means it's more cutthroat than we want it to be. You speak to World Rowing and you ask them what the Blue Ribbon event is, and often people say the eight. I would say for us as Brits, it's the four. Yes. Four is the flagship boat for the Paralympic team. If we win every race this year, we'll have gone a decade being unbeaten. Obviously the men have had a history in the men's four. It's quite cool actually trying to start that for the women as well. I would say Linz was probably the first year that I felt like everything came together. Through Linz, we kind of only starting to get into our stride. Prior to that, we, we, you know, we just hadn't quite clicked and we hadn't quite gelled. Coming to the World Champs, I think we, we thought we'd stepped on and ge genuinely believed that we could win. We were kind of very much in the race and I looked around and I could just see the to see the stern of the poles here. And I was like, that the gold medal is right there and you, you do World Cups and Europeans, but the World Champs is, there's three in Olympiad. And I was like, the gold medal is right there. We had a bit of a hard season, a lot of injuries and a lot of times out of the boat, especially leading up to the Worlds. We just had to like speak to each other as people rather than as athletes and just be like, we need to build together and what do you need? And then I think we got that. Our aim had been to get into the A final, um, and then when it didn't happen, I th there was, you know, it, it, it's, it's mega pressure, because you only have two slots um, that then can progress to the Olympic Games in the B final. Everybody was trying to have a pop. The USA put the strongest crew they've ever had out, and we won by 12 seconds. I think we all just, like, completely flabbergasted that We'd gone from kind of middle of the pack, bottom of the pack, to, to coming through and winning. It was a great race, and, and for the girls to qualify their first Olympic Games was pretty epic. I remember just shouting at the boys, like, we can do it, we can do it, and we were nudging back, and I think by going for gold, we potentially sacrificed uh, the silver. Everyone really ended themselves, so ultimately, I think that potentially was where we were. Havisham, the home of the GB rowing team. With the majority of boats having now qualified for the Olympics, the squad's focus turns to optimising their training and performance in time for the final Olympic trials in March. Definitely right now is about getting to Tokyo. I think I'd be silly to, to, in my mind, be picking and choosing the boats that I want to be in. It's time to work. You, you've got to turn the screw. You know, I've never been through one of these before, so to be honest, like the last three years we've just been building up to this, and now it's like, right, it's, it's go time now. We've just got to keep training and moving forward and you know, keep really pushing the boundaries to make sure that we are in the best boat and we've got the best people beside us, and hopefully the rest will just take care of itself. We just need to stay on track. The group dynamic from everybody is really good, like men's, women's and uh, the paras. We're, we're all working well together and like, I can see the excitement in all the groups, you know, whether it's the men's eight going out and just whacking it out or the women's four just going out there and looking really smooth. You know, that, that motivates you. You want to you try and push yourself on by looking at these people. In the back of my mind, it was always the goal. Like, of course, I want to be the best rower that I can be and that means going to the Olympics and that means winning gold at the Olympics. But you don't get there by thinking about that 
from day one, you get there about thinking about the next goal, about the next goal, about the next goal, and it just so happens that now that, that final goal is quite close. Yeah, so it's very exciting. Most exciting is the men's eight doing a race, and to hear that, you know, it's great. It's like every time they pull the oars, it's exciting. Yeah, very exciting. I've got, I've sort of got hooked on it. Um, on the other hand, we do resent it a lot because you'd say, well, Rebecca, are you coming home for your birthday? Are you coming home from a 25th wedding anniversary? Uh, you know, are you going to be here for your grandest 80th? And she'll say, oh, why, yeah, yeah. And then some old competition will come up. <laughs> and she says, no, 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 Jürgen's calling me or so, you know, or I have to do this. She has sacrificed those things uh, it's hard for her sometimes, but Rowan comes first, and we have to accept that. Every parent of, of a successful athlete will, will also acknowledge that, I'm sure, that that's the loss and that's the sacrifice you make as a parent to kind of allow your child to, to yeah, go for their dream. And there is a selfish element to that, without a shadow of doubt. Um, but if that's what they want, you know, and it's a good thing, it's a good dream, why not? Being able to put that medal around somebody's neck and say, thank you, this four years was worth it. I didn't just miss all these birthdays, weddings, funerals for nothing. This is what I got from it and you're part of that team. And my mum still calls all my kit PE kit. She's like, oh, you've got your PE kit whenever I go home or I'll wash your PE kit for you. <laughs> and then when I go home like at Christmas for the break, she'll be like, oh, do you have to go to the gym? And I'm like, Mum, this is my job. Like, I get, I get funded to do this. So yeah, I have to go to the gym. I'm not just going to go for a run, like to run off my turkey. Like a lot of the stuff we do, training camps, and um, a lot of time away, even if it's just to keep you sane, just a voice on the end of the phone, uh, speak to your girlfriend or whatever, um, it gets you through. In Olympic year, it's quite hard, simply because there's, the whole season's condensed by up to about six weeks. Um, so you do the same number of training camps and the same number of weeks away, but in less time. So certainly there's periods where you, you feel like, and I think you probably quite literally are, away for two weeks, home for two weeks, away for two weeks, home for two weeks. And when you throw in testing and 2K tests and seat racing and performance pieces into that, you feel like you're at home and you never get to relax and you never get to just live. Come on lads, on time, on time. So boys, just a couple of minutes, just rolling on some individual stuff. Like we said, hips, back, quad. Move into child's pose from the camel position. So we want to get as nice, big, round, smooth curve through the spine. Just enjoy it, man. <laughs> I've always struggled up here. This camp has never been my friend. It's always been one I've struggled with. It's like a very tough camp. Uh, I think like, we see our altitude, so it makes everything a lot harder. Um, and like, just gets you very mentally tough. This is where the hard, hard yards are, are won. And like, all the stuff that we do leading into the summer is uh, just fine, fine tuning our speed. But yeah, this is like building the real physiology. This is gonna, like, particularly through the middle of the race in Tokyo, this is what's gonna make a difference. It's been emotional. No, it's good. It's a good camp so far. Yeah. One more day. And two more big sessions, and then we're done. I wouldn't say I enjoy these type of camps, but I know the training benefit that we get from high altitude. So we go on three of these a year. So we do roughly about a month and a half at altitude. And the benefits, you do feel it, but you'll see when you go home, you'll be able to breathe in there. Oxygen! Right now, you're breathing through a stroke. <laughs> so, yeah. Of course, uh, numbers is always uh, one thing, but you watch the individuals, how they cope with different situations. It's a training camp, it's a work camp. Uh, has different reaction to, to the body. They're not all the same. So and so far, yeah, it's good to watch them, to help them, to cope with the situation. Jürgen has this 
ability to look at a package and kind of pick out faults where needed and will also praise people where where is right and you know this camp has been phenomenal we've had some huge scores laid down some records broken of course there are some people that he wants to push on and give a gentle nudge and a little bit of a telling off to um, but you don't want ever that to be you in Olympic year you'd rather be on the good side rather than the bad side So maybe the first few strokes you go will be similar to a sea level and then you're really aware that it's kind of tough. Like even now, like I'm really struggling to get the air in. And Morgan, who I was next to, he was like coughing up blood and stuff, so just gotta dig in. <laughs> dig in. Today. I found my limit a little bit and uh, started to fall off. Uh, but that's okay, that's what this camp's for. It's about finding those limits. I'd say this camp's been a success, even though I've hated almost every moment of it. From high altitude to sea level, and the women's squad, together with some of the lightweight men, are on a water-based camp in Portugal. A camp designed to maximize time on water and for the coaches to experiment with crew combinations. We've gotten some really nice water, um, been able to do a lot of mileage. It's a lot easier to train because you don't have to keep looping around the track, which we do at Cavisham. So, yeah, it's been good. I mean, you missed time it a little bit initially, but that's OK. All right, this is the right idea. Now more than ever, it feels like the time on the water is when you can be mentally most free because you've got most control over, like for those two hours, you can actually, hopefully, f between the beginning and the end, put yourself in a better position for where you want to be. I think from mileage, you get like that bone aching tiredness is what I call it. Like it's like deep rooted, but like I always have like a need to train because I take a lot of confidence from consistency in training so when I've got a program that I can really get my teeth stuck into I really enjoy it so that this is like definitely a camp that I'm enjoying from that side of things. I've been ill and injured a lot this past season there's been points at which I felt like I have been counted out by other people like sometimes it feels like the coaching team or whatever don't quite believe in you but I've actually found that I, through those times, there's been a great power in me believing in myself and I just need to, when the, the time comes and when they give me an opportunity, I just need to prove it. And I am now here on camp when, you know, a month ago, a lot of people probably had written me off. Initial positive with that organisation, attention for it top, so you have those same, that same switch. It's this whole level of, like, top. uncertainty that comes with it, so you're living in sort of almost like a one session at a time world. Double K back to the uh, boat house. We really have many better mornings than this with the weather. I think everyone is a bit on the edge and no one really wants to get ill or injured because they do feel a bit of stress that if they don't make the next few trials, what effect it's going to have on their yeah, so the time out front looks really good. Looks like the boat's running. Let's not hit it too hard. Just really feel your way into the water. With the Fours project, it's completely new and we have no history. You know, it's uh, there's always a boat that just pops out of the ether um, that no one was necessarily expecting. I think, you know, I've coached it for the last couple of years and to me it just looks like it's just waiting to be taken by the scruff of the neck a little bit. There's no like real standout crew that's just rowing away from everyone. It's, you know, it's moved around a little bit in terms of which nations are, are leading the way, so. I do believe that we have the caliber of our athletes to be able to deliver a gold medal on the four. And I, you know, when I think of that, I'm very excited and I just can't wait. Yeah, we've got a strong squad and I think what we've done is trying to find the right blend of what works. So I think these guys are probably the better small boats movers. They tend to have the better pairs results, but they're not the biggest, but they're not the most powerful. But that probably just makes them more suited to this 
boat which needs a bit more feel. Whereas in the eight, you probably just need a, you need some feel, but you need some engines. And so I think we've just tried to, and we'll find out whether it works or not, but we've just tried to put people in the boat types that suit them. And that's not something we've done until now. Back in the UK, it is the British Indoor Championships. This year, the Para Rowing Squad are using it as a testing event and as an opportunity to showcase their form to a large crowd. Uh, there's always pressure in anything you do. Every day this year, like, you, you feel the pressure, you feel it getting closer, you feel the miles ticking down and you, your distance is getting shorter and you can work with, you know, those steps that you can make on get smaller and smaller. So yeah, it, it's exciting, but at the same time, a bit nerve wracking. We get the opportunity to put them in front of a crowd and they have to deliver a performance with people watching. So that's one of the big kind of reasons we use that event. But also it's quite a nice kind of closed atmosphere. They feel like they're on show, they're exposed if you like, and they have to perform in front of that crowd. If you know you can perform in these kind of environments, you can perform anywhere. So that's kind of like the test here is to make sure that you get that right, get your preparation right, get your stretching right in anywhere, in any environment. So yeah, that's, that's why it's quite a good event to come to. It's also in my opinion, really important that the guys in the wider club system get the opportunity to race guys from the squad. I definitely agree that people in the Olympic squad and Paralympic squad should be held accountable and have the times published on the internet and in front of the whole world and people can see how well they're doing. <laughs> an opportunity that a few of our guys could be record breakers on the day so I think that's a really exciting thing to feel like they've got this opportunity to not only put a good mark down and show themselves as you know the GB Rowing team out on show but also to potentially send a message to their competitors ahead of Tokyo. For us it was more about making the world look, making putting our mark on the scene which is really good you know the group as a whole is producing scores that we've never seen. sure the competition can move on but we move on with it instead of the competition catches up for us that's kind of like our, our big ethos is to make sure we get that right make sure that we don't allow the competition to come back on us I was joking with someone that that was literally like the holy trinity. It was like the 2K erg, the pairs trial and the seat racing, which is basically all you can do to test rowers. And this season's happened very fast. I think in previous years, we just like get some really good training in through to kind of February and then it would all kick off. But this year it's been on, but I guess it's, you've got to do it somehow and that's how we're doing it. The Olympics is this like great motivation and it means that you know you do have young people coming in or yeah, I mean even just people who have not been in the squad they're so highly motivated they're snapping at the heels of the older like more established athletes and I, I do think that that's really important because if you're too established too comfortable it's easy to take your foot off the gas so it is possible for somebody who's never raced a world championships or um, you know, maybe is a bit younger, has never trained in the team to just kind of like work their way up the rankings in this final year. Uh, I came here in February last year and did a few camps, did final trials, did seat racing, got sent back to Mosey and cried a lot. <laughs> uh, Re-evaluated what I needed to do, put my head down and worked hard and then started here properly as an athlete in September, so not that long. Rebecca Edwards, well, she is so tough. There are not many athletes that I, I could describe as being tougher as her. It means a lot to her and she's been fighting just to get her foot in the door here. So you could see when she came in that it was, right, this is my chance and I'm gonna make everything of it and be really positive with it and make the most of the opportunity. That's definitely how she came across. It's pretty daunting. Like I look at the people who I train with and I'm used to seeing them 
winning races and winning World Cups. Like, and now I'm in amongst it and had a few weeks where I was like, oh, this, this is a really big mountain and I don't know if I'm capable of doing it. And I was like nervous and scared. And I, every day I say like, if I'm working intensely, 99%, 99%, then I know that even on my bad day that I'm gonna be good. And I also remember that all of those girls started out just like me and I see what they're doing and they're not doing anything crazy, they're just really working hard. She's really beginning to step up to the levels required to be on the senior team. It's not absolutely bulletproof in its consistency, however she has all the tools and at, at some point in the last few months she's shown glimpses of all the like the assets required and the, and the tools required and now a, it's a case of making sure that they're, she uses all the tools on in any given performance with real consistency. I just have to be patient with it and believe that it's possible even on the very darkest of days. That's the key. Today is the 2K test day, um, second one of the season. Um, it's a big day because uh, I guess we race over 2K, so uh, to get to see uh, what everyone does individually on the Ogo is uh, it's very important for us. It's definitely the hardest thing that they have to do. It's the thing that the athletes definitely get most nervous about. Um, and really because there's no hiding place, you can just see the number on the screen. They know what numbers they're trying to do um, and it just makes it really, really tough. Is that a serious question? <laughs> uh, yeah, not, not great, not great. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah, hopefully it's just, just six minutes work. Yeah, you're just sort of dreadful now, just like all the nerves and all the bollocks in your head. Should be good. We do a four kilometer 2K back to back trial. It's to give an indication of where each athlete is at in terms of their baseline endurance. I think it's really hard to think oh, we've got to do a 2K and then you've got a day to sort of switch back on and you've got this and then a day to switch back on and get seat racing. Um, it's, it's hard, but I think it's really good because when we're actually racing, this is what we do anyway, so you have to, you, all the heats and semis and stuff and it's kind of like this, yeah. I guess. Like that's what we're doing when it comes to summertime, but I think we're quite good with like switching on when we come here, but I think when we go away, it's kind of forget about that and then I freak myself out in the day. <laughs> Ready. Okay. This is the fun part. Doing it in the boat. The hour goes to the scary bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, excited. Excited to be doing some pieces with the uh, able bodied guys. I'm going to show them what's what. <laughs> Yeah, it's all right, but early in the morning. The boat maintenance place next door to us was doing some exhaust fumes that 
it made it quite challenging to breathe, didn't yeah, it, John? That was just you blowing, Pete. That, <laughs> yeah. that was the smoke coming out of your ears. <laughs> there was my engine going. To... <laughs> With this, it's like you, you, you might think you've done well, but that just means you've undercooked it. Or you might think you've done badly and actually you've had a really good one. So, I mean, it felt okay, but I don't know if that's a good thing. Good start. I think we struggled a bit in the second half. <laughs> Just seat racing in fours, across, so four fours over 1500. Uh, not really sure how many runs we're going to have, so uh, I think three definitely, maybe four. So that's just uh, you bang out your 1500s side by side, and then you put about an hour and a half off the water between pieces and then straight back on to it again. Seat racing is always weird. Last year I was having a chat with um, Ollie uh, in between races and we just only came to the realisation that like, in what other environment do you come together every year on one day to try and see who gets to keep their job and who gets to lose it? Like you lose to your mate, you shake his hand and say well done and then that's it, that's your career over for that rest of that year and you've got to come back and do it again. Your race, two guys will swap maybe like make eye contact, say good luck, and then go to war and then kind of be friends straight after. And You're coming into the landing stage and Matilda or someone's standing there saying who's being swapped and it's literally your heart just instantly gains about 20 beats because you're play praying it's not you. So yeah, it's, it's horrible. And then you do that every single run for however many days and it's, it's kind of one of those, it's never ending. I think ultimately you just have to get on with it and that's that, your friendship's another thing. Yeah, it's hard, definitely hard. And coping with that is obviously like horrible. I think the pressure side of it is you kind of have to compartmentalise it away from being mates, you know, and hopefully the other person will as well, so that if whatever the result, you kind of will be mates afterwards. I feel like at the moment, every day we come in and there's some form of pressure on you because of like selection of the Olympics coming, going forward. So uh, that doesn't just like chain, uh, I guess, yeah, okay, we're seat racing today, so then maybe the pressure's slightly higher, but it's like that underlying pressure that you'd, we've just been sort of dealing with through, since September. If and when I go to the Olympics, it's going to be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, so I better get ready for it now. I'm going to go practicing every day, every day. When I'm paddling around, I think about how to race, so if I'm already in that zone, I don't, there's nowhere else I need to go, so I just thought, do what I'm good at, make this happen, and that will be good enough. Rebecca did a, a reasonable result in a, a pair with Una, and then um, we went into some seat racing. She was beaten in a seat race. So we then had a meeting, which was uh, James, myself, and, and Jürgen. Um, and yeah, just took her into the office, and Jürgen, you know, said what she'd done well, what she needed to improve on, but unfortunately, at this stage, she wouldn't be continuing on. There is a side to it where it could go, oh, well, actually, what you're doing right now isn't good enough, but that's just the risk that you have to take. Like, and if it's not good enough right now, then I'll come back and work hard and make it good enough. Another day, another mile. You've been gone a good long while. Another hill, another climb. Can't afford to lose no time. Yeah, this next four weeks is the toughest four weeks they'll face in the whole Olympiad by a mile. Their dreams are on the line type thing where it's getting close to decision time. So. There's only plan A for me, and that's to go to the Olympics in the single. And the tr trials that we've got coming up in March are a big stepping stone. We're coming to a big selection process. You know, finding the seats in, in the boat, and I'm sure yeah, the pressure is on them, no question. We now can't be complacent because if I'm complacent, somebody's going to take my spot, so. And the wind blows in your face, you love the thrill, you love the chase.
Shay.